Welcome to the video, my name is Agent 00 Sonic, and in this video we're going to be painting Gonzo from the Muppets. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go back to past me, and I'm gonna do the voiceover now, so. My entire intention was to show you guys that I'm gonna gesso. This is an 11 by 14. I was explaining the canvas size, so then after that, I decided to take it over to my other desk, and then I started gessoing it with one of those soft brushes. That way it's all nice and smooth and even, and everything like that. And then after that, after I did this nice little montage thing, I explained that I'm going to have it drying with the gesso and then I'm going to do the drawing portion. And originally I had a real quick pencil tap, but I'm going to show the full drawing real quick so I can explain what happened with the entire process of why this video came out so late. So I was back home for a few weeks, hence why if you have followed me since July and everything like that, you saw that I went on a, about a month or so hiatus. I just didn't have a lot of motivation and when I came back, a new job and everything in the motion. And so then in honor of her, I did the first clay sculpture, which was a yellow rose, her favorite flower. I didn't explain that in that video present in all my videos from that point on, that way she's always with me. But back to this art piece explaining everything. I have been meaning to get to this and through this. I had this whole spontaneous, okay, I wanna get these things done. Hence why all my commissions started coming up. Part one, part two, and then um, I needed a semi break slash I needed just time to do the next video, which was my large commission. Hence why I did the drawing, sculpture, painting, and then I did my drawing, which was the Christmas in July, which I didn't get to in July because of prior things. So yes, that's why this one took three months to do. And then I went to my large commission, which pushed me back even further because I'm took me even longer. And then I just kept doing the next commission and the next commission. And then I did that shadow drawing, which you guys saw at the time of this video release last week. Um, I just wanted something to warm back up and get things done. And originally I was supposed to get that done in December to get that out and edit and stuff like that. Anyways, I'm just playing catch up is what I'm getting at. I pulled a reference of Gonzo and his nice pepper suit and everything sketched it out and I try to put as much detail as I can. I usually use raw transfer paper to transfer it over to the canvas. I used Thalo screen, got the background done and everything. I did a couple of layers because as you can see, it was very streaky and like I've said in the past, green is not my favorite to do colors in. It's not my favorite to do backgrounds, but I ended up working it and I'm working it even more. And I ended up making it a nice smooth coat, which I was very, very, very proud of myself for doing that. It came out very well done. All right, so we got the background done. Bum ba da bum. Background's now dry. Let's go ahead and get started on Gonzo now. This is, for you, probably not that long of a video so far, but this has taken me, I actually don't know how long it's taken me. I just know that I've gone over this like three different times. Then I used a base layer on Gonzo's suit and part of Gonzo with a very, very light yellow. The way I looked at it, I needed to get enough base down to work on the next part of the painting, which I wanted to take my time and do more details. If you can't tell, and you'll be able to notice too, when I start working on this portion of the painting, going from July when I was back in Florida to where I'm currently at now, you notice that the table has changed. <laughs> So the tablecloth background that you see with all the cameras and everything like that, that will signify that was the end of my Florida portion of it. But in the meantime, I decided to do a little bit of the clothes and the fabric materials, the folds where his arms were bent at and where the shadows fell on it. And I was doing pretty well. I was in the motion and then of course everything prior. Fast forward a few months and now we're back in a different place, different state of mind and I have had some time and some paintings in between. The hardest part was trying to color match a lot of it but then I realized that was still the base. One thing I've learned from doing a whole bunch of paintings and stuff like that now is that big parts first. You go for like the broad areas so for example as you're watching I had gotten the base of his suit done before I did any real details on it. I did Gonzo's hands and his fur on his neck and his head and face things like that i used the same technique i used on my stitch painting which i did now back in 2017 which is six years ago i dabbed the brush on the canvas so that way i can get that texture and everything like that and then after that i decided to kind of do a similar thing with this uh tie but i had to be careful because i already did this spots, polka dots, whichever one call it. I already did that portion, so I had to work around it. Good thing I had a lot, little, little, little brushes. That being said, 
after we did that portion, I decided to go back in, add some more colors and more textures to his clothes because like I said, folks, I wanted to make sure that this was gonna be right. And while that was drying, I worked on his nose, beak. I, I worked on the snout. I don't know what you can classify that. Snout, which was a yellow, a blue, and eyes, pupils, and everything like that. And once I got that done, and it was nice and dry. Look at this little progress shot. This is my work area. I know it looks a little chaotic. We ended up working on his pants to add that brownish texture and everything like that. And add more colors to his snout which wasn't blue, it was like a purple, and I was just trying to figure out the right tone, so I decided to get some yellow, some orange, a little bit of red. I ended up filling out the rest of the mouth with like a peach color, and so that way I can keep one color at a time. So that's why, if you notice, I went peach, and then I started working on the yellows again, and then I started using the orange for the polka dots, or the dots on the tie. And then while I was doing that, I used a little bit of red, and then I went darker until I got all the red on the tie and then after that I ended up moseying on yonder to that there beak again. <laughs> Snout. See I told you I was gonna mess up. And I ended up using uh, like a peach auburn kind of color sort of thing and then I wanted to blend it back in with the purple, not the purple, the blue to turn to purple. And then I started working on the mouth again. Added that red but it was too red and add that pink and that pink was too pink so then I kept working on it over and over again. Then I went back to the pants I added a nice dark green corduroy kind of thing and then I went back again to the beak snout and this time I was pretty confident with uh, the colors because it started blending a lot better and looked a lot nicer than just being so stark and very 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 non-blended and it made my confidence go a little bit higher. Then to complete this portion I didn't want to leave the white part of the canvas because it was too white and too sterile for my touch so then I painted the pupil then I used a small brush and I outlined the dots polka dots on the tie with very 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 precise precision and then I went for the pupils which chef's kiss it just made it look that much nicer it was time to draw on the peppers and everything because at this point the original drawing has been covered up by so many layers of yellow and I did not want to put the Soral transfer paper back on it because I didn't want to smudge too much of the graphite on the yellow parts of Gonzo because then I felt like it would just got too trash. I went and I started drawing the peppers again and this time it added a little bit extra. It made the red parts look really really nice, nice and vibrant but then I realized it wasn't going to be just directly red. So I had to add a little bit of orange and that's why I started with his eyes and then I decided to work the way down with the yellows and then now that I had my palette nice and set up for those colors it was time to get back to the peppers. Went with the yellow, add the little highlights, add some oranges to make it look a little bit more blended together. The rest of the peppers and I blended them significantly better and I'm glad I decided to do that because originally I wasn't going to do that and I was just going to keep it like that and then I realized hmm I don't want that to be the folly of this entire piece. So I went in with the orange, I blurred it a little bit more with the reds and the yellows I had on my palette. And then for the pants, I realized it was a little too much green going on. It was starting to blend into the back of the canvas. So I added some murky yellows and stuff like that. And after that was done, I like pulled the uh, brush down and I added some streaks. Then I finished the belt which was kind of like the where I've seen it was um like the handmade ones that I've seen at like Native American um festivals and stuff like that I don't know the exact design of it but that's what it reminded me of um so we did that entire thing and that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take and a lot more intricate details and a lot of small brushes <laughs> And then it was time to add the speckles of the corduroid or whatever design pants they were to finish it off. I decided to do the buckle and I needed to do that a few times over. And well, now I believe we gotta go back to past me, but not past past me, but past. We're gonna go back to the recent version of 
me going back to that and then we're going to come back to me all right so we finished this one but i have no idea what footage we had as far as an intro or an outro also we have a special guest dun, da, da, da. <laughs> oh well i mean she was here we had the brother lady dun, da, da, da. <laughs> all right but let me show y'all this All right, now you are here with present me at the time and past me and past past me have already talked to you. So thank you so much for watching, keeping this outro or the last outro. I would show you the finished product physically, but that has not been in my possession now for, has not been in my possession for um, a few weeks now at this point. So I don't know if you physically have it in your possession either, Jimmy, but hopefully you like it. Hopefully you like this video. If you did uh, do nice cliche things, I think I'll, I'll put like a little pop up here where it has like the subscribe and the notification bell, leave a like, comment, let me know if there's something you would like to see because as you saw in the beginning of the video, this was a comment that I did and fulfilled. So just let me know. Uh, that being said, peace, love, and hot sauce. And until next time, thanks for watching. Oh wait, that's right. For those that are still here, the next video is gonna be the next commission pieces that I worked on. So stay tuned for commission part, for commission part six. Commission part six is by far my favorite commission video that has yet to be made, but the filming of commission part six was my favorite filming wise. Okay, now we fade to black. I sure hope that that was recording. Yes, it was, sweet. All right, so we're gonna stop here.